All right, guys, how are we doing? Welcome back to another video. So I'm teaching myself microcontroller programming and it is going miserably. <laughs> so let's just crack on Do using this bit of kit called eBlocks. To be honest with you, I just absolutely can't wait to be finished with it now. So I'm going through this bit of kit called, or this curriculum called Introduction to Microcontroller Programming. Honestly, as of now, I would just not recommend it at all. It's just terrible. But anyways, 101 pages in and I guess I just need to skip through. So I tried to use this keypad and it just didn't work for whatever reason and again as with most of this kit there's just no instructions on how to make it work now the next bit i just had a quick read through it's about using analog inputs and the eep rom now i wanted to do this but then it just kind of says that out of nowhere it says well yeah it was interesting it talks about the 8-bit uh analog input signal versus the versus using like 10 bits and then it kind of goes, all right, use this sensor board to get the voltage from the light sensor on the sensor board. So, you know, I thought, okay, I don't have the sensor board here with me. What is the sensor board? So I went onto the website, went into the products, boards, types in sensor, and you get this Grove to Grove sensor board. I've never heard of Grove, no idea what Grove is. Apparently there's a Grove board and this is just an adapter board which you then plug in other sensors to. I don't have these. So yeah, I don't, I don't know the purpose of this, but anyways, I can't do any of this bit, this, this, whatever this is, this page 81. So I have to just X this off. I'm sorry if you've come here for this, I can't do that. So what's next is uh, using software macros. This is a bit more interesting. So. In code-based programming, program languages like C and BASIC, a software macro would be called a subroutine, a function, or a procedure. As programs get bigger, they use certain combinations of instructions over and over again. These programs become harder to understand and read. Routines that are reused can be put into a software macro, which can be called whenever it is needed in the main program. Making use of these software macros lights up the main program and makes it much easier to read. Cool. So I guess we're going to start doing some function stuff. Task one, write a program that selects and runs one of the three different programs by using two switches. Okay, kind of interesting. Switch zero selects one of the three programs. Uh, X, Y, and Z. The LCD displays a text message identified in the select program. Switch one activates the chosen program when pressed. That's cool. All right, so what we're going to go with is when you press this bottom button here. So let's get, uh, well, yeah, let's get rid of this. This don't work. Grab that. Grab that. Okay. So when you press this button, which is on port B, um, my focus gone. So on port, why is my focus going? What are you doing? Hello. Keep focus. All right. No, no, not having it. All right. Anyways. So when you press this uh, button on, which is bit zero on port B, it's written two today. Why is it written two? Anyways. All right. Grab it. Don't get distracted, Hamid. You press this, then it's going to cycle through and tell you, okay, you're on this program, this program, and this program. And when you press bit one, it's going to select that program and then run that program. That's what we're going to go with. As for how you cancel it, who okay, cares? Recycle power, right? All right, so let's give this a go. This shouldn't be too hard to do. Oh, dear. I've had enough. I've genuinely had enough of this. I'm kind of committed to going through it because I know if I criticize it too much, People can always come back at me and say, well, did you finish it, you know, etc. And so I just want to finish this thing. If you're going through this, I feel genuinely sorry for you because this is this is painful. Anyway, so. I'm going to get my I'm going to do my normal uh, screen routine stuff. So I want to I want to look at port B. On the. Um, I want to look at port B and I want to read that into my switch state. So let's say switch state. Okay. Yep. Global variable. Uh, you can be a byte. Yep. That's okay. All right. So then I want to, at the end of, after I've made my decisions, I want to print to the screen. Um, I want to print the different program names and I think here how I do this. I could just do what I've done before, which is have an array. 
So, da, 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 da. do I have an array? No. I'll just print a specific. I'll just. I'll, I'll keep it pretty simple. So I'll use print string, and then I'll just say program one, and then whatever it is, it is eight bit binary up counter. So we'll just say program one up a uh, binary up counter. Yeah. So let's just duplicate that three times. So we're gonna have binary down counter. And what was the last one? Oh, it's like a running light, wasn't it? Running light. I didn't change the number. So that's program three. Running light. All right, program two, that one. Okay, cool. Pretty simple, this. So now we just need a decision, an if statement. So we say, if that switch state, um, what I do, if switch state is equal to zero, we do X and then oh, we'll print program one. No. Uh, ah, damn, wait, what do I want? I want it so that when mm -mm -mm. Hmm. can I do this when switch when port B zero is pressed if B zero is pressed then what do I want to do I want to change the text on the screen so use the counter there's not actually really a clean way of doing this oh dear that nah, not that i can think of anyways in my head so if you press b0 then you want to cycle you want to change program and if you press b1 then you want to select the program and then you need to then run that program so i guess the purpose of this is that it wants me to use subroutines so I'm just going to define some random programs. I actually don't know how subroutines work or macros work. So use a macro maybe I use. And then can I just drag? Mm, 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 mm. No, okay, I don't want to use this text. Use a macro. And get, okay, add new. And then we can call it what? Program one. Does that work? The name is invalid. Program one. That works. Okay. I don't know what this thing is. And then let's just on an output on port A, we're just going to write 255. I'll do that in a while loop. Okay. So that's program one. And then I need. Program two, duplicate program two, okay, okay, and program two, we're just going to write one, two, six, maybe two, five, yeah, we would try one, two, six. Um, let's do a bit, of, let's do just make it look a little bit different. So one two six for five hundred milliseconds, and then we'll do. I don't know, sixty four. That's program two, although that one's still labeled program one. Program two. So now I'm just I'm literally just making functions, right? So again, now duplicate this one. Program three. I'm not fully following, you know the um. Let's write, let's write one there, and then we'll write two or four. And I guess I just need that delay twice, actually, on both programs. Cool. Okay, so we've got, I've defined my three programs now. Done. All right. Now what do we do? We want to, and this is kind of just a lesson, right? So I just want to say, if 
if you press B0, then you need to flick between states. Um, and there are like state diagrams here as well. I'm not sure how to do this. Um, ah dear if you pr so we start on let's make sure just make a switch not a switch state why did I make this variable called switch state I don't know if b0 is pressed then damn I don't know what I'm doing, people. It's hurting my head. If you press B0, then let's just, I don't know, increment a counter. I have no idea. And why am I stuck on this? How do I? Oh, I've gone to component macro. What did I want? I want calculation. So let's do counter. I don't know. Program select is equal to. Program select plus one. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Program, yep. Global variable, yep, yep. Okay, cool. Let's just set this program select to zero at the beginning. And then, so when you press it, you increment this program select. And then, if you need another decision here now, this is so cruddy. I hate this. This is not. If program select, if program select is equal to zero, uh, yeah. or should I just do one, two, three? Yes, let's keep it. Yeah, let's just do one. If it's equal to one, because you've pressed it, then run program one. Otherwise, I'll put that in there. Otherwise, if it's equal to two, then run program two. But it's, isn't it going to get stuck in a while loop? I don't really want it to run it. I want it to select the program. Oh my gosh. This is grinding my gears. I don't want it to run it. I want it to just select it. So I want it to just display that. Oh my days. Okay, program one, I want you to run, I want you to display program one. And then if you're equal to, if you're not there, this is getting crazy, look at this now. It's dragging it out, making it massive as well. Then you have program three selected. And then can we just do that? Just add, on, add a bit of a, maybe a 500 second, 500 millisecond delay. After each one of those. So you press, okay. Then I'm getting somewhere. So you press this button and then it will increment the counter. So what happens when the counter gets ab above uh, zero, above um, three? So we need to just reset it. So if it's not, okay, then I need that to be equal to three. And then I guess if, one more if decision making, if it's not equal to one, two, or three, then I just want to set it equal to zero again. Just reset it, basically. Does that make sense? Then, if you press B1, then I need to do this whole decision-making process again. Is equal to if it's not then if it's not equal to one, two, or three, then make equal to zero. Yep, that's cool. So can I just copy and paste all of this? I hope so. I guess not. Okay, that works. So I just want to run program one. Run program two and run program three. 
Does that make sense? So, if I start the screen, set it to zero, clear the screen, set my cursor there to the beginning. If B0 is pressed, then increment the counter. If it's equal to one, um, I might want to delay there. I don't know. I'm going to go with like a hundred millisecond delay. Just, I'm just so scared of debounce when it comes to switches and push buttons. So you press it. Okay. Let's go with that. I think that, I think it's going to work. Uh, it's not, not easy. This man not having any guidance or instructions is just insane. I'm just given an open-ended task. I mean, I got I got more guidance out of my university degree than I get than I did from this, and this is meant to be targeted at sixteen-year-olds. Like I'm sixteen minutes into this right now, my head is hurting. Okay, so what do we have? What's on our screen? Nothing right now. Why is there nothing on our screen? Okay. Interesting, yeah. So there wouldn't be anything on our screen. That's fine. We we'll press this. Okay, program one, binary counter. Can I select it? Okay, I think it did it. Yeah, it's turned all of them on, hasn't it? Press this again. What happens? Now it's stuck in that program because I've got no way of getting out. Right. I need. I need to get our jail card there. Let's reset the microcontroller. Press the button, program one. I'm gonna go to program two. No, it just so it's entering. It's entering straight into the, the 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 code, and it shouldn't be. Why is it going straight in there? So I'm pressing B one. I'm pressing B zero, but B one's not being pressed. So why is it starting the program? That doesn't make sense to me. Let's just add a delay here because I don't know what's going on there. Doesn't really make sense because I'm saying there if B1 is pressed, which it it isn't, port B is not currently being turned on, so I don't know why it's entering the program. Hmm, okay, interesting. So when I press it, it runs the program, yeah. But when I when I reset the microcontroller, though that LED there, you see that it's it's on. Why are those LEDs on? Is it because of the screen? I don't know why it's right. Something's writing to that switch, so it's almost like as soon as I press it, that switch has been pressed straight away already. I don't know what's causing that. I reset it. That LED is on, and that LED is on. Why? I don't know. Oh, never easy, never easy, never easy. So I've got some LCD switches here. Up at the top, I can press. Do anything. I don't know why that, that that's on. To be honest with you. The moment I press it, it goes off as well. Oh, dear. Why is B the port A, port A, port A? Let me just try to download it again. Maybe it's that, maybe it's that debounce. But yeah, it doesn't it doesn't really make sense to me why why these LEDs are lit up. I mean, they're not right now because I'm sending a file, but you will see once it's sent, they just light up. It almost done sending. You're gonna see it light up. There you go. So why is that happening? To me, it's like there's data being sent. So if I press it twice quickly, what happens? Uh, it just goes straight into that program. So I don't know. Again, just there's just no guidance at all with this. I'm just. This is you know if you don't know about microcontrollers and I don't know about microcontrollers, this is the blind following the blind. I mean I'm totally lost here. So. I'm going to change this be this bit here to make it be 
the last bit instead of the first bit instead of the first switch so we'll just do if b seven then enter the program and then that at least should solve that should solve the problem because I, this bit isn't turning on i mean it might be i might just be missing it so it might still go into the same issue i don't i don't know just crap man I have very little problems with the hardware. I, I think it looks beautiful. I think um, it looks appealing. I want to. I want to use it. I want to get good at it. But damn, this software sucks. So I'll press this button now. Program one, and it's just gone off. Program two, but the screen goes off. Program three, screen goes off. It's gone back to zero. So you can see the functionality of the code working. I don't know this this yeah the hardware for me and I don't know what's going on. There's another issue there which I'm missing. I guess okay. So at the beginning of my code, every loop I'm clearing the screen. Don't know if that's a problem. So maybe hmm. Okay, I think I won't clear the screen here. What I'll do is I'll clear the screen just before it writes. Um, just before it writes to the screen. That's when I'll clear the screen. Right Again, this is a, a, a minor issue. I don't think it's related. My LED is turning on. It could be. Yeah, I don't know. This is just not an educational thing at all, really. This is this is a tool for teachers to be able to, I guess, make their own curriculum. But, I mean, you would never add it. No teacher would ever use this. This is bad. So, press this. Okay. So that stayed on the screen now. Press it again. Yep. So we've got program one. One, two, and three. Now select the program. Hey, look at that. So now, got those LEDs going. I've got no way of getting out of it, which is fine. I can fix that at a different time. We'll press that, program one, program two, select. And then you can't see it, but doop, 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 doop. Let's select program one, make sure. Program one, select, and then yeah, they all turned on. Nice. So yeah, I'll stop there. I mean, I could obviously I could fix the um, I can make it so that when you first start up the 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 microcontroller that it displays program one there. I could do that. That's not that'd be easy. And the other problem, whatever it was, can't remember what the problem was. Uh, oh, being able to back out, yeah, and get out. I could fix that as well. So yeah, I mean, that's not that's not hard. So cool. We'll leave that one there. Thanks for watching, guys. Twenty three minutes. Please, this takes. Takes far too long for me to see this sort of code. It's not a difficult code, but it's like when you don't have guidance, it's a bit tricky. I mean that that looks beautiful, that does. Just you know, being able to see the outline of the code. I can see I'm making free decisions. The flow the flow code feel is nice. And um yeah, I hope I hope to get better at this. I hope I hope I will. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. Take care. Bye bye.